Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's G from Happiness and Crafting. Okay, so today this one really is for beginners. Um, and if you're just starting out crafting, um, I've had so many of you ask me questions of what do I need, what should I buy, I've just started. So I'm going to just go through a few things that I think are pretty essential, um, which are not expensive. Um, that you'll probably have a few of these around the house anyway. Um, so to start with, of course, you need a decent pair of scissors. Okay, so we all have our favourites. Now, I am a lover of big scissors. I find them a lot, lot easier to um, use than smaller ones. But again, you, can, you need to really try which ones you like, because I can't seem to get my fingers in little ones. And I find it quite difficult. If you've got lots to cut out, because I like to do lots of fussy cutting, you need something that's not going to trap your fingers in there so get yourself a nice pair of scissors get yourself i would get um, a big pair and a small pair and see where you you fit in that because look i can get all four fingers in there and it's quite loose because um, when you're cutting i know this sounds pretty basic but if i draw or if i just cut out when you cut keep your scissors straight and move the piece of paper that you're cutting um, because you'll have more control over it like that so you just move the paper and keep the scissors straight and then you can also cut and also as well let me just cut that off hold the scissors underneath if you're trying to cut a, st a straight line support your scissors under there and then you'll be able to cut a really straight line instead of doing that it's hard to keep this um, from wobbling um, but also you can just move move the paper and not the scissors and then you can get yourself a really really nice crisp cut um, like that so it just goes round so that's a good little tip you probably all know that but I thought I'd let you know anyway so that's your scissors so I've even got some little ones like these which are tiny little ones um, for very intricate um, cutting but I very very rarely use them so you can get such a different array of, of scissors um, but try some big ones because um, they are really really good so I'm going to pop those to the side so there's the scissors and then what we need to do is talk about glue right now I've got lots of different glues I use well not really lots of different ones the main one here I use is the Anita's Tacky Glue. You'll see how old this is because I do decanter it into this little one and dilute it with a little bit of water just so it's a little bit thinner. Um, and I pop it in here because you've got the tiny little um, applicator here and it's really good. And this one is fantastic for paper. This is what I love, love, love using for paper because it's really quick and it sticks really, really well. Okay. So if you've got sort of like little um, sticking two little sections down, so let me have a look. If you just wanted to sort of like make a little fold and just stick that little bit on top of that, this is brilliant for just squidging it down there and sticking it on top because it's a really good little applicator and it's really good. Now, a lot of you asked me about um, the glue stick and which one I use. This is just a really cheap um, glue stick it's MP it's one that I get from my local cheap store because I get through so much of it now you can use any glue stick but what you've got to do you've got to make sure you use quite a lot um, don't just do that and expect it to stick because it won't it will come off you've got to really make sure you've got all the areas glued like that and then you'll find that it really really works so much better and it doesn't really matter what glue stick you use as long as you use a good amount of glue and I like using um, a glue stick for big areas um, because it's you know it's a lot easier than using the, the Anita's tacky glue this one is for big areas and it sticks down so well um, I really really do love a glue stick so make sure you use a lot and it doesn't matter try out a couple but this is just a really really cheap one um, this is a solvent free one um, and it's probably not even, well, it's just over a euro I think for a, a big stick of glue like this. So that's really, really good. And again, I use three in one. 
it's very very similar to um, Fabri-Tac um, I use the 3-in-1 because I do again I go through a lot of it and it's slightly cheaper Fabri-Tac is quite expensive especially for the postage and packing um, to be sent to me because I can't just go and buy it from from off the shelf I have to um, I get it from Amazon and the postage is nearly as much as the um, the glue um, so to get more is, is better and this is fantastic for it glues paper and it also glues fabric so if you've got and buttons if you've got little buttons on anything for your work just pop a blob of this down and it's a really really good one really will stick sort of like lumpy bumpy bits as well um, and then we've got Mudge Podge so Mudge Podge I like because it's um, more for sort of like decoupage I, I dilute it down again um, and I use it so if you wanted to do napkins or things like that it's fantastic um, so that's a really good one so I've got some napkins here so if you just wanted to glue down some napkins again when you have napkins just take a sort of two three ply on napkins so you just want the very very top layer so that's the layer you want and then you want to just pop your glue down and then go over the top of it with some Mod Podge as well and you have a fantastic um, coverage and it's a really really good one for decoupage so that's mainly what I use it for um, so that's the glues and of course we've got the stickles which is the the um, glitter glue so it's just a glue with glitter in it basically and it's fantastic I just love it it just adds that little bit of sparkle to your work and I use mainly the sort of silver based ones, the clear ones, which is the Stardust. I use Diamond. Um, I've got a couple here. That's the Diamond. And this one is Crystal. So they're all very, very similar. Um, but I like the, the ones that just give a little bit of sparkle. So that's sort of like your glue. So we've got the scissors and the glues. Um, and then if you're going to get some ink, if you're going to invest in a, in a one in ink pad, I would suggest the Vintage Photo Distress Ink. This is the Tim Holtz. Um, this is my go-to ink pad. Um, so if I want to distress anything, this is what I use. And I also use one of these, which is the blending tool. Now I use the sort of like the rectangle one, but I know a lot of you use the round ones. They both do exactly the same thing. Um, the only thing that I would suggest is be careful what you use on top because I did buy these wherever they are on here these foam blending pads and I really didn't get on with them at all because when I used them they just didn't stick this just came off it doesn't matter how many packs I bought they all ended up the same so what I did instead I saw um, I can't remember where it was now but somebody had put um, they had the round one and they put what you put on the bottom of a chair to stop it screeching on the floor um, and they were just like these foam pad things this is a self adhesive foam pad that I bought and I've just cut it out I did put some um, velcro on the back I stuck some velcro on the back so it sticks down and I've had that one on here for months and months and this is just a spare piece that I got just cut it to size and this is fantastic absolutely fantastic really really good and I'm sure you could probably just buy this um, in a, even in a stationery shop I would have thought or get the little ones that you put under the chair to stop them um, screeching on the floor and that's brilliant but I would go for the Distress Ink Vintage Photo and also uh, lately, last few months, I think, or maybe the time's going so quickly, I bought a big bunch of these little dobbers, um, ink dobbers, and I'm loving them, absolutely loving them, because you just pop it on your finger, rub it on the ink, let me find a piece of paper, and then they just go along here. So you can do little tiny bits um, like this, and I think they're fantastic. Um, so you can just go around your work and it's really easy so you don't get all dirty you just stick that on your finger but again I know lots of people use makeup brushes makeup sponges and all sorts of things so 
if you're going to invest just get something just get a makeup sponge or something to start with um, you've probably got one at home anyway and then you can start doing that and then as you go on and you decide that you want to do all these crafting invest in sort of like something like this and little dobbers they're a lot like easier make life a lot easier um, and another ink pad I use is the stays on brilliant because this will just go on anything you can put this on glass on wood on fabric um, on paper which is brilliant and I just use it this is my go-to um, silicon stamp as well this is one I bought from Aliexpress a long long time ago and you can see it's really grubby I keep it on the little plastic backing because um, I just when I ink I just dip it in and use little sections of it and it's a great great background stamp so if you're going to invest in one get one which is almost like collage and then you can have lots of little pieces on it um, that will make your background look completely different each time um, so they're really good so I use this a lot um, on backgrounds because when you've got when you don't have a huge amount and you just want to use here we go and you don't have any pattern paper or anything just get a piece of tea stain paper or you can just have plain white paper and just ink around it just stamp around it and you'll make yourself a really really lovely background which you can use on anything so that's a go-to so that's aliexpress and you can get lots of lots on there and they're really really cheap as well and i'd keep it on this plastic bit because it's easier to use as well okay so let's have a look what should we go for next okay hole punches right so it's quite nice to have a hole punch because if you're going to make tags and stuff it makes life a lot easier now this is just a fiskars one this is quite old um, but this is just like a little little hole punch i'm not quite sure i don't think it says what size it is on here um, but that's a hole punch but you will probably even have one of these hole punches at home which you can use they do exactly the same thing what you just need to do is just take the bottom off and then just wherever you want to pop your tag or a little hole pop a piece of paper in there and they just do exactly the same thing just making a hole so if you've got one of these already um, you don't need to invest in a hole punch yet so that's really simple um, that you can just keep on your desk but you can get lots of different ones of these so when you know you want to spend some money you can invest in a little little handheld one I think are really good um, because they're quick and easy to use I've also got this lovely one here which actually shaped with a heart which is really cute um, that's not Fiskars this is just a cheaper one that I found but they are all really pretty really nice um, and then another thing is just a stapler so if you wanted to just have a quick easy little thing to do just get a piece of paper let's have a look what have I got here piece of fabric pop it on your page like that say you wanted to make a little tag little topper for a tag staple staple at home somewhere there we go so you can just staple things on together which is really good so i'm going to show you i'll do when i do the next video i'm going to show you how to use all these things and um, so we can actually come up with a little project so and then this one i've just got um this is just like a little corner punch which is a really lovely one because it's got three different sizes on here um so let me find this is just a piece of cardboard so just a tiny little corner punch like that oops let's put this one in like that so it just takes just gives that lovely little edge um, instead of having a sharp corner it just finishes it off really really nicely and that's nice if you're going to make a journal as well your first journal it just finishes it off lovely on your pages um, let's have a look what else okay so um, it's nice to have a knife in your 
um, craft tools this is just a cheap again I don't invest in anything too expensive um, because I don't think it's worth it at all um, only if you're using like this mat I'll talk to you about that mat in a minute um, but these are brilliant this is just a cheap knife you get refills in here there's probably a couple of euros make sure you get sort of a, a sturdy one um, and then you can just um, change the blade and this is nice when you're making a journal and you want to cut your pages um, just even the, the end and the um, edges off and this is brilliant um, and a ruler as well so you just pop your make sure you get a metal ruler and just slice down the side and it gives you a really really lovely lovely finish and yeah these are just this is just a cheap ruler here this one is more expensive this is magnetized on the back um, but it's quite this is um, memory keepers one but you want to have a, um, a metal one really which is best because if you're going to cut it's a lot easier to use um, so just a, a ruler okay then what have we got let's have a look so let's see now these are inks now these inks i've actually done a video on these these are just done with some crepe paper really easy peasy um, different crepe paper um, and the, co the color comes out of it really really easily um, so you just different colors mix it with some warm water and pop it in a little spray and you've got some brilliant um, little colors spray colors really really inexpensive that's a brown one but you can also have these little spray bottles and just pop a little bit of um, coffee in there as well I normally when I use coffee I use the granulated coffee because it dilutes really well um, so you want to put quite a bit in there with some hot water warm water dilute it and then you've got a lovely little spray to spray your paper so they're really good too the other thing that I use a lot of is gesso now this is just white gesso primer um, and this is what people use to prime their canvases and stuff but again people have started using it in all mixed media and I've started using it as well I've used it for years and I absolutely love it lots of people um, do make their own this is a Windsor & Newton that came off as I took the label off there but this is Windsor & Newton you get loads and loads of different makes but I quite like this one um, and it gives you a nice little shabby um, look to your work I only use it I probably, you've probably seen me use it in my projects before anyway um, lots of people do make it so there are lots of recipes I've tried it a few times and I've not got on very well making it um, so I have resorted back to buying it and buying a big tub like this will last you a very very long time um, so this is the only second one I've bought in probably two years because um, you don't use too very much of it at all so I love my gesso but again an alternative you can use white um, acrylic paint as well to give the same sort of look um, on it so that's quite good and another thing I've used um, not too often I'm pretty new to this and this is the gel matte medium now this is like a glue and it's absolutely amazing this is a heavy body one so this is quite thick so this is if I can open it up this is a like a nice glue and it's fantastic and it's good lots of people use this one as well in mixed media projects because it help, holds things really well so if you've got buttons you've got metal embellishments or anything like that that you want to stick down this is brilliant um, it sticks really really well especially if you want to do a a nice big collage with lots of um, buttons and bits and things like that lots of lumpy bumpy this was what I would suggest using and then you can paint over it and distress it and things like that so that's really really good okay buttons so things that you'd have around the house I think to embellish your work I think you'd probably have I've got a little lid here with other bits and pieces in okay so we've got some buttons now you can get buttons off 
any of your old clothes so if you're going to a thrift store a charity shop um, sometimes they have bags of buttons so I would pick up a bag of buttons while you're there and also at home if you've got old shirts your husband's shirt or whatever like that before you throw it out grab the buttons and if it's decent fabric tear it all up and use the fabric as well um, so they're really really good to use on all sorts of things especially since we were doing the um, sewing themed bits and pieces that I did as a Friday freebies a couple of weeks ago these were perfect right these bits here so we've got paper clips in two different sizes I have got some brads here I've got some little tiny little um, safety pins and I've got some bulb clips now these you will be able to buy from your stationery shop quite easily um, they obviously come in different shapes and sizes these are just standard ones these are just ones that you buy out of your um, stationery shop but you can get some very pretty ones um, different colour ones but these are just bog standard cheap ones um, which are nice bulb clips um, are lovely these are all clothes pins or gird pins they're called, called all sorts of different things um, and these are lovely because I use these for uh, my tags so I think they look really nice to hang hang off little embellishments and things like that so that's an investment as well um, but these bits and pieces I'm sure you'll probably have around the house anyway so they're really good things to have in your stash let's have a look and also paper wise now you know I've shown you a video as well where you can tea stain your paper this is just standard copy paper I think in America it's letter size or something I think you call it um, but all I've done is, is tea stained it really really simple um, some people do in the oven I do it in the garden um, so that's really good just tea stain it really easy I do have a video on that as well um, and then bits of paper that you probably have in your house this is just lined paper that you'd have in a in a folder this is just some um, graph paper not graph paper just the checkered paper um, and this is just plain so all of these you can use you can use them as they are or you can tea stain them or coffee stain them so that's simple there you'd have those in the house too and these are just bits and pieces okay this is just um, what's it called it's like the grease proof baking parchment that you can use um, I've got these which I had in my kitchen drawer as well which are little, little paper doilies these come in all sorts of different sizes and they're very inexpensive to pick up bits of packaging that we've used before bits of cardboard don't throw any of your boxes away this is all food on here and tablets from my mum which I'd never throw any of the little boxes away this is an envelope look at the inside pattern paper so that's fantastic that's great to use this is an old sandwich bag which is great so all of these you'd probably have stashed away in your drawers anyway um, packing paper this is just papers that I have off my green tea the packaging I mean which is here which I just cut up and I have a little box of them here so that means that when I want to make a tag I'm just ready there to make a tag um, and again this is just a corrugated card so um, which you can use all your boxes and I would suggest as well if you've got any like shoe boxes or anything um, keep those because they're really good to put all your little bits and pieces in um, to keep them all safe and you've got a nice lid to put on top um, so I would use those as well and here let me just pop these bits out of the way these are just some napkins now you can you might have napkins at home anyway um, which you've used um, you could probably have just some plain ones um, again like I said before they're normally two or three ply okay so when you use them you just want to use the top layer okay 
can't get that one off. I did get this one off, didn't I? Here, like that. So just take it off because there's another two layers and you just use that bit and you can stick that over your tea stain paper. And here's a bit of packaging on there. Um, so they're really handy to have. So you can pick those up if you go out um, anywhere. You can probably pick those up quite cheaply. Um, and lots of people do sell them on Etsy as well. So they're really handy to have. And last, really, is some bits of fabric. Now, I normally buy mine from somewhere like um, a charity shop, thrift stores that you have in America. This was just an old pillowcase. Um, and I thought it was really, really pretty. And I've used it because I tea stained mine and coffee stained it. So it gave it that really grungy look. Um, so they're really nice to use. This was an old sheet which I just tore up and then I coloured it with some of my pink um, crepe paper ink here. Same. Oh gosh. So that was really good. And then I just popped it in the garden to dry. This is an old top that I've had for years that I picked up from a charity shop when I was in the UK. Um, and it had all sorts of different fabrics on it laces and shiny i've used this a lot and this netting um, so please when you go into these shops take a look at the texture of fabrics doesn't matter what style it is or whatever it is take a look at all the textures on on one piece and see what you can you can buy because they're really really cheap and you know you're giving back to a charity as well which is nice um, these are just bits that i had these are from charity shop as well these are just bits of fabric because they do sell fabric in there as well this was a pillowcase and this was just like curtain fabric which is nice and this was an old curtain as well now I've used a lots of this I color this as well and it's almost like oh my gosh I nearly forgot cheesecloth um, this is very similar to cheesecloth um, which is really really nice this is an old sheet which what I did, half of it, I actually tore into like little inch strips. Um, so I've got lots of these and this is really nice to use um, as like a closure for one of your journals. You can just tie it around um, on there. These are just bits and pieces on here. Look, this is old bits of string. This is an old label that you can have. These you can pop through your next tag that you're making so keep these bits and pieces that you got so anything that comes off any of your gifts that you're given you can keep those um, this was um, just little bits and pieces off I don't know what they were off actually this this I think was tied something up this was like a blanket that I had that they, they tie around um, this to tie it all together so I thought that was really really lovely love the color um, and then again we've got the cheesecloth let me get that here because I nearly forgot this is how I buy it now I have um, thrown away the actual label on here for some reason I don't know why but this is the cheesecloth I buy this is quite thin this is quite a, a tight weave, I mean, um, but you can get different types of weave on them. Um, I did get one with a, a looser weave, which I did prefer. This one is quite tight and this is quite hard. Um, but I still, it's still, if you ruffle it up, you've probably seen me do this anyway. And it wrinkles it all up. So, um, but I love, love my cheesecloth because again, you can colour it with coffee and tea and all sorts of things and all sorts of the little bits of um, stain that we made from there as well hi guys sorry I didn't realize the camera went off so anyway so that's the cheesecloth um, which I absolutely love um, and the other thing I was going to talk about was the um, glass mat now I don't know whether you can really see it I do actually pop this piece of chasing paper over the top because you can see the light in that reflects off it 
but this um, glass mat is one of the best things I've ever brought because it's absolutely fantastic um, I do have a link for a lot of the stuff I do have a link below from Amazon um, so you can have a take a look at that um, and see if you um, give you an idea of the prices and everything on them um, so you can see what I've bought but this this glass mat is absolutely amazing um, I'm not sure whether everything is in the way or I'm not quite um, out let me see if I can go out just a fraction oh, I think you can see Oops, wrong way this is brilliant this is a tonic studio one now it's a glass heavy duty mat um, which is brilliant you can use your knife on it um, it doesn't hurt the glass you've got all your measurements on it and it's a fantastic protection for your table I think it's brilliant I do gesso on it I even put my ink so if you've got your distress ink I even squidge that on it it all just wipes off um, you can watercolor on it just I mean put everything on it um, and it will just wipe clean and I think it's absolutely fantastic absolutely brilliant love 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 it um, and the other thing I was going to talk about which I nearly forgot as well um, which I use a lot of is the hug, hug snug seam binding now I know in America you can get that to hand it really easily but when in Europe, because I'm obviously in Portugal and the people in the UK, it's very difficult for us to get hold of. I do get mine off Etsy. I'll pop a link to the Etsy shop that I get it from. And it is from America. Um, and the postage is quite expensive. But I just absolutely adore it. I always buy the white because I've said this before. Um, I will colour it again. I will colour it with the the coffee and tea I will colour it with different um, colours like I did here um, with the crepe paper and there's all sorts of different ways that you can make inks um, or colour spray so there's lots on the internet as well so you can have a look on YouTube um, but I always do get the um, the white seam binding um, because I think it's the, the best because if I bought coloured I'd be having to buy hundreds um, and you can always I just colour it to, to suit whatever project project I'm making at the time as well so I think it's brilliant love 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 it okay guys well I think that's probably it for now um, if you have any questions or anything please let me know if you want to know what else I use for doing certain things um, just let me know um, and but I'm hoping that will just give you the basics of a few things that you will probably have around the house anyway um, and what you would need just to start off with um, and I'm not sure whether I mentioned my cutter this is my cutter I don't think I did did I this is again this is the tonic studio cutter this is just a little handheld cutter I you do also use the big one um, but to start with this is brilliant absolutely fantastic I've had a couple of these and I just love them um, brilliant look how all my bits of fluff and dust in there as well um, but I really really love them so that's a good investment if you're going to use a cutter as well so that's brilliant okay guys well thank you so much for joining me um, do have a lovely lovely week um, and I will come back and I will make some bits and pieces with all these things um, so if you want to craft along with me um, get some bits of glue and all your little bits and pieces together that I've showed today um, if you've got similar and I'll make something along with you all right guys take care have a lovely lovely week and I'll speak to you soon bye bye <music>